Hey everyone, this is Simon from Roblox and today I'm gonna try to tell you about our new feature called Pathfinding. So let's get right down to it. So I have a studio level open here to demonstrate it. And the idea behind Pathfinding, it, it makes really easy uh, from script to find the path in an interesting uh, Roblox environment from one point to another, which is a very critical and important component if you want to make something like a monster or an enemy or something that that's moving on its own in a in a world um, that's guided by scripts, um, obviously for for any kind of uh, RPG or or shooter or like any anything where you want to interact not just with other players uh, but with with some characters or NPCs, uh, this is this is the hardest part of making something like this. It's really hard to do with scripts, so we're providing some functionality to uh, help you doing this. So let's check it out how it works. Hopefully it's very simple, but uh, since it's only scripts, I'll try to go through some examples. So let's start it right here. So I have a, I have a level here and um, there's a green point, which is um, part that's called start and a red part that is finish. Let's try to compute a simple path between those points to see how it works. So in order to compute path, you gotta use a pathfinding service. I'm gonna be uh, writing scripts right here on the console. Hopefully you guys see it. If not, feel free to zoom in, pause or something like that. So to create a path, you first use get service to get pathfinding service as usual. And on the pathfinding service, there is a function called compute raw path async. Async means that it could be yielding as a lot of other functions. And what you give to this functions is essentially position of the start and finish. And for my game, that would be game workspace start position. And game workspace finish position. The last thing you need to provide, you need to give to uh, computer path is the max distance, meaning like how long is the path uh, that you're allowed to go from one point to another. The maximum right now is 512 studs, which should be um, enough for a lot of games. And here, I think 200 should be enough. So I'm calling this and all oh, right, yes. Typo, pass finding service. And more typos. How about this? Nice, okay, so I got this path object back. Um, what can I do with it? So for example, let's print status of this path. And path is success, so this means it was able to compute a path. Uh, it might not all the time, maybe your distance is not enough, maybe there's just no path from one point to another, you'll be able to get all of this looking at the path, path status. Another thing that it does is it gives you point coordinates of the path. And this is essentially an array of um, all of the points that the path is consists of. So you can see that this is a table. Okay, cool. Um, let's assign this to some variable. Points equal path get coordinates. And um, you can see how long it is as usual. With ju it's just a Lua array. Okay, so it has 44 points. Uh, let's print the first one. And you can see this is vector three, and the second one, and the third. And well, by looking, I guess you, you look at the, at the points. You can see that the, the positions are close, but they differ by four. And that's the fundamental property of our, of our pathfinding, because it works uh, by voxelizing the whole world and then running a star algorithm on it. So all of the points are on this four by four resolution, which is important to keep in mind. So looking at the coordinates is, is not that fun. So I made a little script here that visualizes is, is a little better. So as you can see, it starts with the, uh, the same way as, as my script and console. It creates a path, it creates points. 
then it, there's a model in workspace that just placeholder for those points it clears it up and then it goes for all of the points and for every point it creates additional part that's like can collide false small size and like sets the color to gray and puts into this model so let's see how it works out so if i click run I'm going to run all of my scripts. As you can see, it computes the path and creates like little parts to, to mark the spots. And I can move one and the other. And as you can see, it, it still computes the path. So to make this a little, a little more interesting and a little more interactive, uh, let me see how this works in, in Dynamics. So this is the code that computes a path. Um, let me put this in the loop. So essentially, I'm, I'm making this code run every tenth of a second. So like every tenth of a second, it should recompute the path and re-visualize re it. Um, so let's see how that works out. So it starts by recomputing the path, but when I'm dragging, you see, as I drag, it recomputes it. So you can see it's, it's pretty interactive, but it's not just that. It, by moving, if I move the obstacles or, or um, you know, change my world, it is able to find the best path dynamically. And that's the great property of, of, the, of Roblox pathfinding, because it means you don't have to pre-compute or put any kind of nodes on your, on your path, and your, your level could be completely dynamic um, and, and change, and you know, there, there could be like explosions, the level moving. It always is able to find the path. For example, if I go here, obviously it can't go, it jumped so high, so it says, okay, so this is the closest uh, point that you have. On the other hand, if you put the start up, it knows that it can fall and, and, and follow this, this point. Um, so, and as if you've seen, it's really easy to create path object in a script. Um, it works uh, pretty fast. Someone created a very cool level with hundreds of humanoids. Um, and it still doesn't lag and works works pretty good. So last thing I want to show is um, kind of full application of this uh, and made made as a game. Uh, this is the sample level that I made, um, where it's it's kind of a classic Pac-Man game in Roblox. So let's check this out. So there's a bunch of monsters who try to get me and they use pathfinding to do it. See, they're like jumping and they're trying to reach me. And if they do, they're gonna kill me. Oh, nice. That was quite an impact. But, okay, see that they see how they follow me. And, but if I eat this thing, then I'm starting to be dangerous to them. And they need to get all the way up to respawn. And as you can see, pathfinding lets you do a lot of very interesting behavior, where you can script how monsters move, that they first target you, then they they go back um, to respawn, and the level is dynamic, so there's like doors opening and closing all the time, and they're aware of their surroundings. So yeah, that's the that's the gist of it. It's pretty easy to start using it in a script. The real tricky part is then animating the character and use it as part of your gameplay. Um, but it's uh, it it adds a lot to your game, and I encourage everyone to use it. And please tell us what kind of cool stuff you're able to come up with. Um, we'll absolutely feature the best um, games that use pathfinding on the blog. And in general, I feel. This is a great addition. Thank you.